food and fuel for the endurance athlete. And this covers everything from ultra running, marathon running, Ironman cycling. It's an area that causes huge problems for many, many endurance athletes, and they really shouldn't be suffering at all. It is actually really, really simple. And most of the time you're just being sold a load of rubbish through companies trying to sell you products and all sorts of ideas that just don't make any sense. So let's put some of those myths to bed today, talk about what you should do and how to conquer your nutrition. Okay, so food versus fuel. Two very different things in my world. Food, what you eat every day, your meals, your snacks. Fuel, the stuff you use during training and racing to fuel your moving body. So food, we've got to look at the main goal of why we eat, right? Let's get basic with this. It's to teach your body to burn fat. We want to balance your blood sugar, improve your immune system, help you recover better, give you all the nutrients you need to stay healthy and all the energy you need to perform at your best. So in terms of macronutrients, that's about 30% fat, 30% protein and 40% carbohydrate from all your meals and snacks. You want that ratio so that you don't get any spikes in insulin, your body can access fats for energy, and yet you're storing enough carbohydrate in your muscles to help you recover and go again. So you want variety from your nutrition, but you also want consistency. Things that you know you digest well, give you the energy you require, help you recover, and things that you just basically tolerate. It doesn't matter if you train for one hour or for five hours. To me, your nutrition stays the same. That is, you eat the same meals and same snacks. All that changes when training volume changes is the amount of fuel you take during sessions and quickly post sessions for recovery. And we'll talk about fuel in a minute. So when you put your food and fuel together, that's how you get your specific, if you like, optimal mix for the day that you've got in front of you. If you're having a low intensity zone two kind of day, you might still have 30% protein, 30% fat, and 40% carbs, because you're not needing much carbohydrate, you're just wanting balanced blood sugar to access fats for energy. On a high intensity day, your carbs are gonna increase, but from fuel, not from your food. That's the difference, right? So you're still eating 40, 30, 30, but you're gonna might, might be up at 50, 60% total carbohydrate over the course of the day because you've been taking a lot more fuel in during that training session. 